In this video, we're going to compare the difference between an elastic, inelastic, and a perfectly inelastic collision. In all of these situations, we're going to assume an isolated system. This means that there are no external net force. In an elastic collision, the objects will bounce off after they collide. In an inelastic collision, the objects also bounce off after they collide. And then in a perfectly inelastic collision, the objects stick together after they collide. In an elastic collision, the momentum is conserved. In an inelastic collision, the momentum is also conserved. And in a perfectly inelastic collision, momentum is also conserved. The key thing here is that the system needs to be an isolated system, which means that there are no external net force. As long as that condition is met, the momentum, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. For elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved. For inelastic collision, the, there is some kinetic energy loss. And then for perfectly inelastic, you will have maximum kinetic energy loss. Now let's take a look at some examples and see if we can identify whether the situation is an elastic, inelastic, or perfectly inelastic collision. Here we have a collision between a 2 kilogram object and a 1 kilogram object, both of them moving to the right. The 2 kilogram object is moving to the right at 5 meters per second. The 1 kilogram object moves to the right at 2 meters per second. After they collide, they bounce off. First, we're going to calculate their momentum, the total momentum before and after the collision. Before the collision, object 1 has a momentum of 10 kilograms meters per second. We get the momentum by taking the mass times the velocity. 2 times 5, we get 10. Object 2 has a momentum of 2 kilograms meters per second. The net initial momentum is 10 plus 2, which is 12 kilograms meters per second. After the collision, object 1 has a momentum of 6 kilograms meters per second, and object 2 has a momentum of 6, also 6 kilograms meters per second. If we add those up, we get 12 kilograms meters per second. This is what we expected because this is an isolated system, and so the total momentum is conserved. Total momentum before the collision is equal to the total net momentum after the collision. Now let's take a look at energy. Before the collision, object 1 has a kinetic energy of 25 joules. We're using Ke equals 1 over 2 mv squared to calculate that. And then object 2 has a kinetic energy of 2 joules. So the total amount of kinetic energy before the collision is 25 plus 2, which is 27 joules. After the collision, object 1 has a kinetic energy of 9 joules, and object 2 has a kinetic energy of 18 joules. So the total kinetic energy after the collision is 9 plus 18, and we get 27 joules. So notice that the total kinetic energy after the collision and the total energy before the collision, the kinetic energy, is the same, 27 joules. So this tells us that this is an elastic collision. Let's take a, take a look at another situation. Now we're, we have another collision. We're using the same, we're starting with the similar type objects. Object one has a mass of two kilograms and object two has a mass of one kilogram. However, after the collision, object one has a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. Object two has a velocity of three meters per second. So the velocities after the collision is different than in scenario one. First, we're going to calculate the momentum of the of our system uh, by adding the momentum of each object after the collision. Object 1 has a momentum of 9 kilograms meters per second after the collision. Object 2 has a momentum of 3 kilograms meters per second after the collision. So the total, uh, the net uh, final momentum is 9 plus 3, which we get 12 kilograms meters per second. And this is what we expected because it's an isolated system, and so the total momentum before the, before the collision needs to equal the total momentum 
after the collision. Now let's take a look at energy. After the collision, object 1 has a kinetic energy of 20.25 joules. Object 2 has a kinetic energy of 4.5 joules. So if we add those two up, we end up with 24.75 joules of energy after the collision. So we can see here that there is some kinetic energy loss. And what happened to some of this energy is that it got transformed into sound. Uh, also, it could have been transformed into heat energy um, when objects collide. And why might, how might this be different than scenario one is that the materials of the objects could be different. And so once again, if the if there is some uh, loss of kinetic energy and it bounces off each other, um, that is referred to as a inelastic collision. Now let's take a look at one more scenario. Now we have a collision where the two objects, after they collide, they stick to each other. So since they stick to each other, we know this is a perfectly inelastic collision. And when we calculate the momentum of the objects when they stick together after the collision, uh, we get 12 kilograms meters per second, um, which is what we expected um, because momentum is conserved in an isolated system. So in all three types of collision, momentum is conserved. Um, now let's take a look at the kinetic energy after the collision. After the collision using 1 over 2 mv squared and using the uh, using 3 as the mass because we have two objects, we add them up, we get uh, 3 kilograms, uh, we get a total energy of 24 joules. And because they stick together, we know this is perfectly inelastic. And when it's perfectly inelastic, um, uh, we will have the maximum kinetic energy loss. So this is a perfectly inelastic collision. Next, I will show you a diagram to help you to uh, distinguish between elastic, inelastic, and perfectly inelastic collisions. When we think about these three different types of collisions, sometimes it's helpful to think of it as a spectrum. On the two ends of the spectrum is elastic and perfectly inelastic. In elastic collision, remember that there is no kinetic energy loss. In a perfectly inelastic collision, we have maximum kinetic energy loss. And in inelastic, we have some kinetic energy loss. And where did this energy go? Um, I mentioned that some of it is transformed into heat. Um, there's also some, as a result of the collision, some of it could be transformed into sound energy. Also, a characteristic of perfectly inelastic collision is that the two objects will stick after the collision. And for elastic and inelastic, the object bounces off each other. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you some shortcuts um, in calculating elastic um, collision problems.